What do you make of this plea deal? Is, is essentially uh, General Flynn saying that he's willing to play ball with Bob Mueller? It certainly seems that way um, because the one count of pleading guilty, even though it's a felony count, was rather restricted. And you'd have to wonder why he wouldn't be indicted on more than one count. So it would seem to indicate that there's some kind of a deal in the works, that there's some kind of uh, uh, putting their heads together and, and working together, uh, or that Flynn has flipped. Congressman, how do you expect this to help the investigation of Mr. Mueller? Well, I've said from the beginning that I wanted Mr. Mueller to, to do whatever he needed to do. And, and what, what the American people deserve to know is the truth. And uh, Flynn was, was there uh, a lot of the time and uh, knows what was going on. And uh, I'm assuming he's telling the truth. And so I think that this is, uh, you know, another uh, uh, a problem for the president in this, in this uh, ongoing uh, Russian scandal. Congressman, but uh, so so you say that folks want to deserve to know the truth, but I mean, walk me through this because you know this. I mean, here in Washington, that there are plenty of people, uh, both Republicans and Democrats. You know, case in point, Tony Podesta, who have really not always disclosed who exactly their foreign powers are. What needs to be changed in the culture of Washington, D.C., for these political consultants, these lobbyists, these advisors on presidential campaigns to more fully disclose which foreign powers they're actually representing? Well, I, first of all, there, there needs to be disclosure, but there also needs to be truth. And it was pretty clear. I mean, they fired Flynn because he lied uh, to the vice president. Um, and this is just uh, another thing in the, in the pattern. So, you know, generally, if you tell the truth, the truth will set you free. Um, it's not a matter of uh, whether or not there should have been uh, dealings with the Russians. There cl clearly should not have been uh, to uh, have the Russians interfere with our elections, but then to compound it by lying about it. And, of course, all of us remember uh, General Flynn at the Republican convention leading the chant of lock her up about uh, Hillary Clinton. It seems a little bit hypocritical uh, in view of what's come out in recent days. How much momentum does this give the investigation to take it from here and then move the liability towards President Trump? Well, you know, again, uh, I'm not uh, in favor of going after anybody. I'm in favor of finding out what the truth is. And if any laws were broken, then uh, whoever broke those laws should be, go should, we need to go after them. Uh, it doesn't matter who it is. So I don't think it's a matter of just trying to bring down the president or trying to bring down somebody else. Uh, obviously, there was tremendous interference uh, with our election, uh, our democratic process by the Russians. And it obviously uh, seems to be uh, known about or, or directly dealt with in the highest echelons of the Trump campaign. So I want to know, and I would think the American people want to know, uh, exactly what happened. So it's not a matter of trying to get somebody. It's a matter of trying to get at the truth. Oh, let me let me ask though about from a business perspective because uh, Silicon Valley has also faced intense pressure for not disclosing uh, their their advertising. You're seeing starting to see changes uh, from Facebook, from Twitter about disclosures. They're self policing. Do you agree, number one, that that, that self policing is enough or is it not? And what role do companies have to play, particularly as we gear up for midterm elections and 2020 elections? I mean, what role does the business community need to play here and prepare? Uh, for this, these types of advertisements that we saw from, the, from folks out in San Francisco? Well, I think that things are changing. I think that the old business as usual uh, is not enough. People want more transparency. They want it to be open. You, you see it with the sexual scandals that have uh, come out. And now you, know, you see it with, uh, with these different uh, groups who may keep things to themselves. I think the climate uh, in Washington is, is changing. I think the people demand the change. And I think it's really good to open up the, uh, the door and let the fresh air come in. Now, in another piece of news that's preoccupying President Trump, we're hearing that Secretary of State Rex Tillerson could be out, that the CIA Director Mike Pompeo could be in. What's your assessment of the latest developments there? 
Well, let me first of all say I think what the what the president and, and Secretary uh, Tillerson have been doing to the State Department is ap absolutely outrageous. Uh, they are uh, proposing uh, uh, all these draconian cuts. Uh, we have morale of the State Department lower than ever before. A cut as much as 31 or 33 uh, percent. Ambassadors that haven't been ambassadorships that haven't been filled. Senior level people that that that, that haven't been filled. Um, it's just a disgrace and, you know, we have a State Department, we want diplomacy to work, we want USAID to work, we want to prevent a war. So I understand the President wants to increase the Defense Department because uh, he wants to make sure that we're in tip-top shape. I don't necessarily oppose that at all. I don't, do not oppose it. But I, don't, I do oppose it if it's at the expense of the State Department, where we absolutely need these seasoned people in the Foreign Service uh, to, to help keep us out of wars and to assist businesses and, and uh, yeah. citizens uh, overseas. So Tillerson hasn't been doing much with it. He's been rather aloof. Uh, Trump has been uh, hell-bent on cutting uh, these, these uh, um, proposed to cut, to cut the money to, to a dangerous proposal. Uh, and I think that, uh, I think probably there has been a bad feeling. I think Tillerson's been rather aloof. And um, I think Trump, I call it fly by the seat of your pants diplomacy. Whatever is on his mind that moment, whatever is in his tweet that moment comes out. And I guess if you're Tillerson or any secretary of state, you don't really like to be undermined. So I have just been very dissatisfied as the ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, the way the president uh, and the secretary of state uh, have handled uh, funds to the State Department. It's absolutely disgraceful.